Yeah, I need to fucking compose myself because I wasn't ready for this movie. I watched it last night. I'd never even heard of it. And I already know this is going to be a movie that I rant about in 10-inch text to all my friends for the next two years. So instead of subjecting them to that, I'm just going to make this video. Um, go into this movie cold. If you haven't already seen The Vanishing from 1988, go in completely fucking frigid, freezing cold. It's the best way to go into it. Um, it's on the Criterion channel. It's also, just pay for it. It's on Amazon for like $4. Don't look on YouTube. Don't look on these different sites because you will find other parts of it and it might get spoiled. So, spoiler fucking alert. Do not watch this video if you have not seen The Vanishing, 1988. So the film opens with Rex and Saskia and they're uh, going on some kind of road trip and they stop at a gas station. She gets kidnapped and where this movie kind of turns the thriller on its head and makes it unlike any thriller I've ever seen is that we immediately, within the first 20 minutes of the movie, we know who took her. We knew uh, where she got taken. We don't know where she got taken, but we know that she was kidnapped at the um, gas station. So everything kind of hinges on the motive. It's why, why did Raymond do this and what did he do to her? And luckily for the audience, uh, Rex becomes obsessed with this. And they cut to three years later where he is literally driving himself insane trying to figure out what happened to Saskia. And he happens to cross paths with Raymond. And that's where we get this kind of Faustian bargain towards the end of the movie. It is um, Raymond says, hey, listen, I'll, I'll just sh I'm not going to show you or tell you what happened to her, but I can have you experience what she experienced. So there's this ultimate dilemma of, okay, do I, do I really want to know that bad that I'm willing to possibly die, probably die, or do you just leave it where it is and never know and have that eat at you forever? And this is where the big spoiler is. So if you're still watching this and you haven't seen the movie, first of all, why? You don't listen very well. And second of all, turn the video off now. But long story short, Rex wakes up buried alive in a fucking coffin. Now we'll talk more about the ending in a minute and maybe that fear doesn't really shake you to that core. Maybe that ending didn't really rattle your bones like it did me, but we'll, we'll get back, we'll come back to that. So first of all, I don't know why, I never even heard of this fucking movie. Um, the guy that plays Raymond, I forget the guy's name, it's like Pierre or something, it's very French. He, his performance is amazing. He conjures up Anton Jagger, he conjures up uh, John Doe from Seven, he conjures up the dudes in Funny Games of just these like next level kind of iconic bad, bad, bad guys. So I'm surprised that I haven't really heard of this movie. And he has these little nuances like, uh, he's definitely quirky and he has these nuances like for instance when they're screaming in the front yard of their house and then he goes and asks the guy later, he's, Oh, I heard some screaming the other night. Did you hear that? And he says no. And then just the look on his face trying to contain his excitement that he knows that he can get away with what he's going to do. It's great. It's just very nuanced and uh, it's fun to watch. If that performance isn't played as well as it is played in that film, the whole thing fucking falls apart. And another thing is, is he a nice guy? Is he like a weird perv? Is he, does he have some kind of bloodlust anger thing? Like, is he a misogynist? We don't know. And... He, he is very good at strag straddling that fence until we find out what his true motive is. And you don't know what, what's behind that guy's eyes. And it's just such a good performance. And then he goes into this flashback and you do find out why he does the things he does. Why he buried a woman alive, kidnapped and buried a woman alive. And he just has this thing that we all kind of have, but in, the thing is he acts on it. Where when he was a child he was on the edge of a balcony and he thought like, what if I jump? And then he jumped and he found out. And i that's what's so scary is because we all have that in us. We all have that thought of what if I jerk my arm on the highway and go into the other lane? What if I huck my iPhone into a fucking lake? We all have those thoughts. We just don't really act on them. And his thoughts are a little more extreme. Like what if I fucking buried a woman alive and then buried her boyfriend alive? And this movie is just paced so well and it plays out so interestingly that it had me hook, line, and sinker for the entire time. And it had me feeling about eight different kinds of anxiety. And it was a pleasure to go through each one of them. And the director, just the way he lays everything out, he has a lot of hubris. He has almost as much hubris as Raymond. Within the first 20 minutes of the movie, he's laying everything out, but he has so much faith in it in that plot that it's going to be gripping even with this. He's going to leave you a breadcrumb trail and still 
fucking blow it out of the water. He plays with your expectations a lot. He subverts your expectations a lot. It's really fun to see. And this movie, we have the whole thing with the golden egg, where Saskia at the beginning of the movie is talking about this recurring nightmare where she's floating around in space in a golden egg. And she has like an updated new version of the dream where she's floating in space, but then she sees another egg and she's worried about colliding with the other egg. And it's like, at the beginning, you're like, why are you telling me this? But it kind of plays out and it kind of folds in on itself because at the beginning of the movie, when they run out of gas, she goes towards the light source, goes towards that tunnel, which is sort of a golden egg. And then at the end of the movie, when Rex finds himself buried alive in a fucking coffin, uh, he lights the lighter and that's a bit of a golden egg. So it kind of folds in on itself. And to me, it's just fucking brilliant. And so back to the ending, I could see where maybe if you don't have the fear, I mean, who doesn't have the fear of being buried alive? But if that's not something that really shakes you to your core, you could kind of be like, meh, and at that ending. Because there are a lot of endings, like, in that's my least favorite trope in a book or in a movie or whatever, is just, oh, he's crazy the whole time, or it's fucking, they're the same guy, or it was all a dream. And I could see how this could feel like that to some viewer, but to me, it worked. And I think this movie has a lot of merits outside of the uh, ending itself. And just the end, it is just such a great fucking ending. And it reminds me of Seven, where he... Raymond, like John Doe, has so much leverage, and he knows that the pieces are going to fall where he wants them to fall. And Rex just caves in. You know he's going to cave in, or you have a feeling, I had a feeling he's going to cave in, because you have to know. He's literally driving himself crazy trying to find out what happened to his girlfriend. And he gets his answer, but it's at a stiff fucking price, stiff fucking premium. And on top of that, it's not just, oh, I'm being buried alive. It's you zonk out like he's timing it zonk out for just enough time to wake up and you're buried alive that's fucking terrifying i don't know it works for me it blew me away this it, this movie just did a lot for me just tonally structurally uh obviously the ending the plot the characters the performances this movie did a lot and this film it kind of brings to mind this thing that jean paul sartre has and forgive me if i'm fucking this up because i probably am gonna fuck it up but you take the idea of a gambler and he goes to the card table and he has anguish of whether or not to gamble. It stresses him out. He's saying, "I'm listen, I'm really trying not to gamble. And so the card table reminds him of his resolution. But in actuality, he could gamble. He could not. He could do any number of things. And I use this a lot with drinking in my mind. It's not the card table, the drink. It's not the item in itself that is going to nudge you to do the thing. The anguish comes with the freedom to be able to do it, not it itself. So... You can overcome that and really tackle a lot of things, but I feel like uh, Raymond in this movie kind of perverts that idea. Just the whole idea of, I can do this thing, so why the fuck shouldn't I? And then he does it, and it's it goes both ways, because he saves the kid at one point. It's just brilliant, brilliant fucking movie. Blew me away. Uh, four and a half out of five stars. The, taking away half a star, because the score is fucking terrible. <laughs> Music is really bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had to make this video. This movie really blew me away i i watched almost 30 movies in april and just kind of waiting for something to nudge me to make a video like this but nothing was really that good so thank you for listening and please follow me at ultra deluxe on instagram at ultra deluxe on twitter and at ween w-e-e-n on letterbox thank you Stay hydrated.